several times, if you want to compute solutions based on thermal elasticity, we have different set of actions. For instance, if you want to know this building, to compute this building, the structural design of this building, so we have to, to, to consider several actions. <coughs> Self-weight, for instance, the loading, the, the overloading uh, weight, then maybe wind actions, okay, the wind actions, maybe snow actions, you know that from the, from the coat, snow actions, okay. And then, of course, uh, the responses will be different. And then we have to look <coughs> for combination of those actions, okay? And look maybe for the most or the less favorable response of these combinations. <coughs> hmm? So that means that I have to compute that structure once for self-weight, once for the service loads, once for the, <coughs> for, the, for, the, for the win, and then once for every combination of them, okay? So that implies a lot of work and that, and that. Then there is something that simplifies enormously the whole thing, which is the superposition principle. Superposition principle that I anticipate that it's only valid for linear elasticity or thermal elasticity. With all consequences. That means that even the boundary conditions do not change uh, along, along, along the, the problem. So what this principle says, look. Uh, the principle says the following. If you have, well, maybe that is the way to do that. If you have a system of actions, A1, and you compute the response R1, <coughs> And another system of actions completely different. For instance, this is self-weight. And this is weight, wind, for instance. And compute the response of that in a thermoelastic problem. <coughs> then the response to a certain linear combination of system of actions 1 and system of actions 2, for instance, a coefficient lambda 1 times a1, a1 plus a coefficient lambda 2 times a2, is just nothing else then the combination of the same combination of the responses. So the response to this is that. And of course, now uh, that can be extended to more actions and more systems just by extension to that. Now consider a third, a, a, a fourth system of actions combined linearly with that. We attain combination of three systems of actions and so on. So in other words, what the principle of superposition says is that the response to a certain linear combination of actions is the same linear combinations of the corresponding responses. Well, uh, what is the, uh, the reason for that? Look, the reason for that is that in the problem, in the problem of looking at a problem with some actions and some responses <coughs> and a machinery inside, that is the machinery. This machinery is linear. All operators appearing in this machinery are linear. And that's good for you to know that because you should identify other problems in which some of this linearity is lost and automatically the principle of superposition is, doesn't, no longer applies. For instance, look, here appear some stresses which are multiplied by some uh, operator uh, multiplied, uh, which is affected by an operator, which is the divergence. Well, this <coughs> nabla operator and the divergence operator is a linear one. So it can be proven that the divergence of sigma 1 plus sigma 2 is the divergence of sigma 1 plus the divergence of sigma 2. Look, here we have another operator. The strains are multiplied by a uh, uh, a, 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 a tensor, which is the constitutive properties tensor, which is linear because it's constant. <coughs> the strains or the non-thermal strains due to the stresses, due to the sum or the combination of two strains is C times the combination of the two strains, which turns out to be 
the same combination of the strains for of the stresses for every of these strains. Why? Because this is a linear combination. Why is this linear, for instance? Because C is constant. If C was not, what happens even in a nonlinear elasticity? If C typically depended on the strain, which happens in some more complex elasticity problems where the material enlarges strains, for instance, the, that, that coefficient depends on the size of the strains. So that's no longer uh, linear. Uh, the linearity of this, of this operation doesn't hold anymore. So this, the basis is that this is linear operator. Also, the operators here, in terms of the uh, displacements, are the gradient of the displacements or the transpose gradient of the displacements, which are also linear operator. The, the application, that of application here is also linear operator. So everything in the problem, everything in the problem is a linear, is linear. And based on this linearity, it can be proven that, th that theorem. So look at it, it's very easy. But look, the spirit of, the, of your, your looking at it is that all operations involved are linear. So the operations over something plus something is the sum of the operations over every individual component. And in the same spirit, the operation over a, com a linear combination is the linear combination of the operations. So that is what is crucial for proving the superposition problem. Okay? And that means that whenever, whenever this linearity in all, not just in one, in all the operators involved, typically, if the problem is large strain, in large strains, that operation, that operator, the operation that appears here, there, is, there appears here another term which is nonlinear. Okay? And in plasticity, we'll see plasticity in a few days. In plasticity, this operation is not linear. So when the, either the material or the geometrical response, that means large strange problems, backlink, uh, I mean, and uh, nonlinear material problems, typically plasticity, then the linearity, the superposition principle doesn't hold. And then the only remedy is to know what is the full response for all possible actions, and then look at them and choose the worst one, the most, the most unfavorable. Okay? But in problems where the problem is elastic, then the, 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 the solution is much easier. Look, I just can <coughs> compute my problem under individual actions. For instance, for a building like that, self-weight, and I compute displacements, stresses, strains, individually. Then I remove every, any other weight, any other load, and just compute y, for instance. And I compute the stresses, the strains, and displacements. And I, I compute temperature, and I re replace, uh, and I just compute strains, displacements, and, and, and the stresses. And then I compute the snow at the roof, the snow load, or I compute anything. And then, I just keep the responses of to under those of any any of those actions. So now, if I according to the code, the European code, the Spanish code, whatever is the code, I have to compute the response under a certain combination, 1.5 the self minus 1.0 the, the or minus 0 0.5 the favorables minus 0 0.5 the unfavorables. This is like a post process. It means knowing the responses for every action, I don't need to compute again to, for computing the combination. I just combine the responses, which is a much trivial and a much easier way to do it. 